ECR attracts another 9.9 .9 billion ringgit in investments. Perak declares Matang rabies controlled area. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the afternoon edition of News on 2. I'm Zaliha Kairi Ismail. The East Coast Economic Region ECR has attracted another 14 local and foreign companies with 9.9 .9 billion ringgit in investments, bringing the total investments into the economic corridor to 109.15 billion ringgit. This edges the corridor closer to its target of attracting 110 billion ringgit in investments by 2020. The 14 investors exchanged documents of the deals with ECERDC at Parliament yesterday, witnessed by Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Tun Razak. The 9.9 .9 billion ringgit investments are expected to create 4,000 jobs. With the signing of the deals, the transformation in the ECER has a positive impact on the livelihood of Malaysians, with over 140,000 jobs and 26,000 entrepreneurial opportunities created across the urban and rural areas of the region. The CER investment growth in the last 10 years had contributed significantly to the region's overall gross domestic product GDP, which increased by 9.7 billion ringgit, or 1.8 percentage point from the 3.9 percent GDP growth since 2007. The export of halal products from Malaysia reached a total of 42 billion ringgit in 2016. International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Sri Mustafa Muhammad stated that out of that total, half of it was contributed by the food and beverages industry. Berkaitan dengan uh, pelaburan, ingin semaklumkan bahawa sehingga 2016, kira-kira uh, 12 bilion ringgit telah pun uh, melabur dalam industri telah berjaya ditarik dalam industri halal ini uh, dan ini telah syarikat-syarikat uh, ini telah berjaya uh, untuk uh, mewujudkan kira-kira 11,000 uh, peluang kerjaan. He said this at Dewan Rakyat yesterday when asked to comment about developments in the country's halal product industry. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Mustafa Muhammad said the Department of Islamic Development or JAKIM is working together with state Islamic religious councils to expedite the halal certification process for traders, especially small and medium enterprises, SMEs. Datuk Sri Mustafa noted the International Trade and Industry Ministry are providing assistance to small companies that were facing financial constraints to comply with the requirements needed for the halal certification. Dalam hari itu di bawah SME Corp, pemanya uh, agensi di bawah MITI, uh, agensi ini mengeluarkan beberapa bantuan uh, termasuklah geran untuk mempermudahkan syarikat-syarikat kecil industri mendapat sijil membantu mereka di segi uh, uh, konsultansi uh, mengubah suai premis kerana salah satu daripada masalah di hadapi ialah mereka memerlukan kewangan yang agak besar untuk memulihkan syarikat, syarikat kecil sederhana bagi mematuhi uh, sejarah halal. In addition to grants from SME Corp, Jakim has also implemented numerous courses and seminars to SMEs to help them obtain the halal certificate. 19 companies from various industries have received their halal certification via JACIM's fast approval initiative, which was introduced since June. Through this initiative, the processing time of applying for a halal certification could be shortened from one month to three working days for non-sensitive products. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Datuk Sri Jamil K. Bahrom, said this would help to resolve the delay in obtaining the certificate. He added, however, that Jakim will ensure that the halal certification procedures is conducted with full integrity without compromise. Supaya keyakinan masyarakat dan juga orang ramai, bahkan di peringkat dunia, meyakin, merasai yakin dengan sijil halal Malaysia ini benar-benar uh, dianya adalah merupakan yang tulen dan asli penuh dengan uh, integriti. Maksudnya ialah uh, tidak ada kompromi uh, dalam hal yang boleh menyebabkan kepada sijil ini uh, dia disalah guna dan sebagainya. To date, there are 5,943 companies with Malaysia's halal certification. Roadblock inspections to monitor the movement of pet dogs and cats in Matang Pera ended today, following no reports of any rabies case since the sub-district was declared as a rabies outbreak area on July 17th. State Exco Dato Dr. Mahang Sun said the area is now declared a rabies controlled area, which is a step down from its previous status as a disease outbreak area. 
He also stated that 43 samples taken from dogs' heads have tested negative. Dan kawasan tersebut telah dikeluarkan daripada kawasan IP ataupun indeks penyakit wabak kepada indeks penyakit kawalan. Dan ingin saya maklumkan di sini bahawa kepada pelawak-pelawak atau pelancong ke kawasan Kuala Sepetang ini, janganlah risau. Jadi bolehlah mereka datang untuk melancong macam setiap kala. Despite the virus now being under control, monitoring and public awareness campaigns in the state will be continued as a precaution. Meanwhile, in Sarawak, the state health department has reported 111 new cases of dog bites yesterday. 34 cases were reported in the Syrian district, 32 in Samarahan, 26 in Sri Aman, and 19 in Kuching. 270 dogs were vaccinated yesterday in a large-scale vaccination program conducted in villages throughout the Syrian district. 50% of the courses in the Youth and Sports Skills Training Institute, ILKBS, will be conducted in English by the year 2020 to enhance the communication skills of its graduates. According to Youth and Sports Minister Khairul Jamaluddin, it was not a move to sideline the Malay language, which is the Institute's current medium of instruction, but to enable the graduates to work with international companies. Khairi said the marketability rate of ILKBS graduates had improved to 92% in 2016 compared to only 83% in 2013. Trend ini akan berterusan sebab untuk kita mewujudkan ekonomi yang berpendapatan dan berteknologi tinggi kita tidak hanya dapat kita tidak hanya boleh bersandarkan kepada laluan akademik saja. Uh, kita perlu juga uh, memperkasakan TVET seperti mana yang telah pun kerajaan buat uh, dan ini juga bermaksud bahawa tanggapan uh, persepsi rakyat dan uh, uh, masyarakat umum mesti berubah. He said this after attending the convocation ceremony of the ILKBS in Putrajaya, where 6,226 graduates from eight national advanced youth vocational institute, 10 national youth skills training institute and youth golf skills academy received their certificates and diplomas. Women, Family and Community Development Minister Datuk Sri Rohani Karim had proposed for the setting up of a team of volunteers to help targeted groups, especially the disabled and the elderly, in using the MRT public transport. The Ministry's Audit Committee will examine and work together with Prasarana Berhad regarding the needs of these target groups. Dato Sri Rohani said, to date, the Ministry is 70% satisfied with the safety and comfort features provided specifically for this group. Why not? Adakan sukarelawan untuk membantu. Sukarelawan, maybe they use uh, some proper vest or something untuk menunjuk dan sebagainya. Otherwise, you can be at a loss. Get sukarelawan to be around, then I think it's much better, more friendly. She was speaking after boarding the train from the Tunraza Exchange TRX station to the Museum Negara station with 20 passengers comprising disabled people and senior citizens to give them the opportunity to experience a ride on MRT special coaches. After their trial ride, this group will propose any suggestions that will help improve the MRT facilities for the disabled and the elderly. The Coral Reef Restoration Program at six marine parks in Malaysia has been listed into the Malaysia Book of Records following the simultaneous plantation of 8,300 coral reefs in the park. Natural Resources and Environment Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Junadi Tuanku Jafar said the total exceeded the previously expected target of 7,200 corals. Dato Sri Dr. Wan Junaidi said the six marine parks are located at Pulau Tinggi, Johor, Pulau Tioman in Pahang, Pulau Paya in Kedah, Pulau Perintian in Pulau Redang in Terengganu and the Labuan Federal Territory Marine Park. Jadi mana dia uh, usaha ini berterusan tetapi oleh kerana Jabatan Tambang Laut yang punya kepakaran sendiri dalam sudut ini dan mengetahui sendiri di mana letaknya tumbuh karang satu ditanam maka mereka menjadi peneraju lah. The award was presented by Malaysia Book of Records manager Lee Pui Leng to Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Junaidi at the Pulau Redang Marine Park in Setiu, Terengganu. The event was held in conjunction with the 10th anniversary of the Malaysian Marine Park Department and the 2017 World Coral Reef Celebration celebrated on June 8th every year.
Meanwhile, the Sultan of Johor, Sultan Ibrahim al Marhum Sultan Iskana, has decreed that all scuba divers wishing to undertake diving activities at the Sultan Iskanda Marine Park TLSI must get prior approval and register themselves at the Mersing District Council in Johor. He added, apart from this, divers should also obtain proper insurance coverage for themselves. Sultan Ibrahim said these steps needed to be taken as many coral reefs had been damaged, mostly hit by boats being docked without following the rules and regulations set. Yang mana menyelam di Taman Laut Sultan Iskandar mesti diregister di Majlis Daerah itu dulu sebelum. Tak boleh pandai-pandai daripada Singapura datang menyelam daripada mana datang menyelam. Kita kena jaga kita punya alam sendiri tadi. Sultan Ibrahim said he also plans to gather volunteers to clean up Pulau Aur in Mersing, Johor. The Sultan of Johor added that continuous enforcement will be taken together with other relevant agencies, including the MMPD, the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, Fisheries Department and Johor National Park Corporation. So far, 13 islands in Mersing had been gazetted as part of Sultan Iskandar Marine Park and eight other uninhabited islands around the area were waiting to be gazetted in a bid to expand the marine park. The Trangganu Meteorological Department has linked the southwest monsoon at the waters of east coast of Patli, affecting the search and rescue effort for the remaining three missing fishermen at the Kuala Dungun estuary in Trangganu. Its director, Janua Husin, said the movement of the wind during the monsoon had caused the wave to reach up to over one meter in height. TM at its office in Gongkada, Kuala Besut, Genoa said the situation often caused difficulties and posed a risk for the search and rescue team, especially after midday to late evening. He added that the morning sea condition, however, was relatively calm with a wave height of about 0.5 meters. Kalau cadangan saya, adanya pagi boleh memantau keseluruhan sebab keadaan cuaca mengizinkan. Tapi kalau sebelah petang, sebelah pada pukul sebelas, saya rasa sebab kemungkinan angin dan uh, ombak besar, jadi tidak selamatlah. Uh, cuma pemantauan melalui udara, kemungkinan boleh. Dan tinjauan untuk tepi pantai boleh, itu saja. Four fishermen went missing while another managed to escape when a fiberglass boat they were in capsized near the Kuala Dungun estuary on August 2nd. The first body of one of the four missing victims, however, was found about 8.50 a.m. on August 4th. The Malaysian Election Commission EC will showcase the second quarter supplementary electoral roll DPT of 2017 at the state election offices of Kelantan and Perak today, lasting seven days until 14th of August. According to a statement made by the EC, the exhibition was in line with the provisions of Regulation 14, Subsection 3 of the Election Regulations Registration of Electors Regulations 2002. Earlier, the EC carried out the Supplementary Electoral Rule Exhibition from July 19th to August 1st, 2017, in 960 locations throughout the country. In this respect, the EC called on all voters who had submitted claims to check their names at the Registrar of Voters Officers of the state involved. For inquiries, the public can call the headquarters at 03-8892-7018 or any state election officers.